Um, all right, we have a we have a good mass now. So again, uh, for folks who just joined, thanks everyone for the joining us for the second session. We're gonna get into it because we realized um, last session that an hour went by really quickly. Um, last week we used the case study of the death penalty to kind of help frame our thinking um, about an understanding of community organizing and kind of what that entails. Um, we gave you some homework uh, to look at defund the police or to understand how that's playing out in your community, all with the goal again of um, helping us think outside of our issue box, but recognizing that at the end, at that final session, you will be talking about your issue from the perspective of the goals you've identified, your targets, your tactics, um, but all of this is about building out that base for you. Um, and as I mentioned before, if you are comfortable taking your video off, we would love to see your faces and really totally recognize if you want to keep your video on, off, that's fine. Um, not required, we just want to see you. Um, all right. So to get started, we're going to go into some breakout groups again. Again, today we're talking targets and tactics. So regardless of what your issue is, you will have a target and you will use tactics, okay? So today we're gonna dive into that a bit more, but before we, wanna, before we do that, we're gonna break into groups again, just so that you all can get to know each other. Hopefully I shake the groups up a little bit. You'll be with either, um, let's do a quick uh, facilitator and staff intro. So you'll be with one, and up, one of them, us, I'm Karen, uh, STTV staff and Marissa. Just a quick intro. Well, hello everyone. Good to see folks again. I'm, my name is Marissa and I'm the Executive Director of Art and Resistance Through Education and now I'm in Florida. So good to see you all. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Jenny Girardi and I'm the Arts Program Manager of Speak Truth to Power. Welcome back everybody. I'm Laura Ostrendorf and I'm the Training Manager of Speak Truth to Power and I'm located in Washington, DC. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Adnan Karim. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of Human Rights Education here at Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights and I work with the Speak Truth to Power team. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start breaking you out into your groups and you can, um, and then I'll pull up the questions are just introduction, who you are, kind of where you are, some of the issues that you care about, what you're focusing on, um, just kind of an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit more, okay? And here we go.
It's really cool that you guys are in high school and starting early, by the way. Absolutely. I would absolutely agree with you, David. <laughs> That's really great. All right, so I was a little, I was trying to, we're using a new um, presentation um, thing, so I was testing it. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. All right, welcome back. Did I, was that enough time? Did folks actually get to mix and mingle this time? Last time I was told I cut you off a little too short. Good. Was this one a little better? All right. Um, so before I pass on to Marissa to really dive into the content today, again, we're going to talk about targets and tactics. I wanted to just take a moment and ask that we just um, take a moment to think about and reflect on the lives of two really important um, people in, in our history, in this country, and I would actually say globally, um, C.T. Vivian and John Lewis. Uh, we lost two incredible people last week. Um, our, our world would not be the same without them. Our country would not be the same without them. I know people often just, just refer to civil rights, but I call them um, um, our history. It's more than just civil rights. They um, moved and um, created so much. Um, and so in their honor, I just wanna thank all of you for getting into good trouble. As John Lewis says, we need to get into good trouble. We need that we need to get into good trouble. So thank you. And we just take one quick moment to just hold them in the light and to hold them in our thoughts. Thank you. All right, Marissa, let's see if I can do this for you, my friend. Here we go. Resume sharing. Um, yeah, do folks see anything? I can't see people. Do people see this? I actually don't see it, um, but I don't know if it's just me. I don't, do others... see, I don't see anything. I think if you're trying to share something, I don't see it. Yeah, it says you started screen sharing. <laughs> I'm really sorry, folks. No, thank, thank you. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Can you no. see it? Yeah. Can you folks see it? Cool. Yeah. So, cool. Thank you for doing that. And, and thank you, Karen, for bringing up um, the folks who passed away. Um, and I... I I spent a lot of time, I think, grieving um, w about John Lewis, and and I think, and I was also thinking a little bit about how much he cared and highlighted young people, um, and really saw young people as like the future. So, um, and just like how committed he was also to making sure that future generations continue his work. So I'm really glad that you brought him up, and um, uh, and I also think about it in terms of folks who are even if you've just started doing social justice work. Um, I get, I also get like how exhausting it can be. And I, sometimes I feel exhausted, um, but understanding it, I feel very grateful for the people who have come before us because they've, they've done it for like longer than I've been alive or as we've been alive. So it kind of keeps me motivated. Um, we're gonna, I think, I know Karen's, uh, and thank you for doing this, is like kind of working to um, maneuver the slideshow. If there's a way we can go up to a few slides or is, yeah, I think it's over here. Yeah. So, Again, my name is Marissa and I run an arts organization actually. So I mentioned to folks who are interested in art, please talk to me about how we use art to talk about social justice and human rights. Um, but for today, I'm super excited to talk about goals and tactics. And we're gonna talk about goals, uh, you know, this, uh, as Karen mentioned throughout this whole time, you thinking about your goals and getting clarity of, of your goals is really important and thinking, looking at your local communities and looking at um, the resources that you have that, you'll, that will kind of help crystallize your goals. So it's a totally okay if you don't have it yet, but just continue to think about it. Um, and ultimately you're thinking about what are you trying to achieve? And what is the specific thing that you're trying to change in the world? Like we mentioned in the question that we started off with, right? And when we think about objectives, um, let's see, uh, we're, we're thinking about the things that will help accomplish these goals. Um, and actually, Karen, do you mind, can you scroll up, is it possible? No. Yeah, sorry. Hey, by the way, Karen, if you, you see on your top left, it says 150%. Yeah change that a little lower to maybe a, a hundred percent uh, yeah so you can see the, the full slide yep yeah um yeah next one oh yeah um so 
again, when we're thinking about goals, um, here are just a few examples. And as you have done, you've been doing your research and you've been thinking about uh, like what you want your goal to be, like you might've come up with your own. These are just a few that I pulled out um, um, from different resources. And especially because we're focusing on defunding the police and looking at defunding police, I want to choose specific examples. So one example I found um, that in a group of folks that are based in Texas is the Georgian Acres Neighborhood Association. So one goal that this community had, and as you can see here, was looking at local leaders, city leaders, and increasing the number of um, paramedics that are available to respond to incidents. So especially, I know some of you are interested in mental health, but especially looking at drug use and mental health issues. So the idea that like, what, if the community takes care of these issues and we have, we increase um, the number of folks that can respond, then that means that we won't have to rely on police that oftentimes exacerbate situations, complicate situations. So that was one kind of specific goal that the community had to address, address this issue. Ah, and I see here that someone, um, and someone knows, Pia knows some of the people in the organization. Yeah, and feel free to, and you may you be the expert or know more, so feel free to also tie in anything as well. Um, the next example, it's critical resistance, and critical resistance has been around for a very long time, specifically looking at um, prison abolition, um, especially like it's been again around for decades, uh, based in Oakland. So they have net chapters across this, the country, but one particular one um, is in Oakland. And then one is called, um, they had a campaign or a coalition, I should say, called the Urban Shield Coalition. And this is something I was actually just learning about as well. This particular program it was called Urban Shield, and um, it's, it was actually like a, an annual militaries, a military weapons expo. So it brought up a lot of folks, SWAT train, like people who were interested in SWAT training and law enforcement across the country. And the idea was that this, at this expo, like they were encouraging um, folks, especially police, to be training people in military tactics and disaster responses. So the idea that they had this huge expo that was, again, increasing policing, increasing, um, and, you know, advocating for funding, bringing people together in a way that like, um, the community was really against, like, you know, um, and the community also felt like it was, um, you know, again, increasing more violent solutions to, to situations. So the, this particular group, Critical Resistance, had this campaign to defund and eventually el eliminate Urban Shield. So again, these are, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I wanted to give you a sense of like, these are specific goals that folks um, came about and came, wanted to put together to try to, to achieve. So when we, the other thing that we want to keep in, in, in mind, and this is kind of what we're going to focus on mostly today, is looking at targets. Um, so when we think about targets, and as it says here, like the idea that target is always a person, it's not an institution, it's not an elected body, but it's an actual person that you're trying to, to reach. So you're, when we think about targets, we're thinking about people who, like, who's gonna, who has the power to give you what you want and to change something in your particular, um, to, to help you achieve your goal. And what kind of power do you have over these particular people that you can leverage as you um, attempt to organize your campaign? So next to that and following that, and this is just quite simply like when you look at secondary target, that's someone who has power over the people that to give you what you want and again, to achieve the goal that you want and what power do you have over them? So, you know, I've seen in different instances, this oftentimes is very unlikely targets. I remember there are folks who were um, in campaigns that there were folks who were in power and um, organizers are trying to do uh, targeted campaigns with, with them. So the idea, if, if it was a particular uh, pers uh, a person who's a police, president of a police association, you might talk to their pastor, you might talk to other folks, you might talk to their church community. Those are folks that like you could target and reach out to in order to again, change a particular um, thing you're trying to achieve. So when you think about targets, if you remember um, just a few minutes ago, back to the the uh, first example I gave you, um, we're looking at uh, Gregory Ahern, so Alameda County um, Sheriff, and at that back to like the the Urban Shield program. So he was kind of the the architect of this program or this 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 conference that was called the Urban um, Shield. So for him, it was necessary that that could be a target. That's one person that could target in terms of like what kind of leverage, what kind of power did this particular group have over this person, um, and so that, that would be an example of a target in that particular campaign. Um, other targets, so secondary targets, um, one thing, so the, from what I understood about Urban Shield is the idea that they actually were successful at least in convincing the Board of Supervisors to 
to actually move towards solutions that were demilitarization, community-based. So in that sense, that they're, they're successful in helping try, try to rid of this particular program. Um, so you, one would argue that the secondary target would be the Alameda County in California Board of Supervisors. And that was someone that could have power over that particular um, person. And the person, again, who, like, when you think about secondary targets, you know, who hires them? Who is responsible for their paycheck? Those are kind of things you want to think about when you're thinking about targets. Uh, next, again, we're going to go back to the, the Austin police, uh, the Austin uh, campaign. Uh, let me go back to this for me. Um, so again, back to the Georgian Acres Neighborhood Association. Um, you may think that one of the targets would be the president of the Austin Police Association. So um, Ken Cassidy could be a target in this particular campaign. Again, one individual that you're trying to um, involve in order to change your, your to, to reach your goal. And, and thinking about another target, um, and, maybe, and maybe Pierre or other folks might know, well, I was, when I was thinking about who else could be a target, um, one was also Selena uh, Chi, uh, president of the Austin EMS Association. So one thing that we wanted you to also think about, a target isn't necessarily your opponent. A target is someone you're merely trying to use a part of your, um, to achieve your goal. So this could be someone, again, it, doesn't, it could be someone you want to bring on to help change something. It could be someone, a, a target doesn't necessarily have a negative connotation. And that's something that I've been learning as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, it merely is someone that you're going to bring in. So tactics. So um, and I'm sure folks have seen Deep on the Police and Black Lives Matter um, artwork across the country, which is super uh, exciting. And also thinking about like this is uh, again, it's, but at the end of the day, it's a tactic. You know, our, like, it goes without saying. Like we don't, we're not just people aren't just creating art for the sake of art in this case. So they're like that's not the end goal. It's a, it's a part of something that we're using. Folks are using to bring around um, public uh, awareness to something. So when we think about it, tactics in itself is commonly used to designate the ways resources are deployed and directed within a broader strategy, broader campaign, so you can reach the desired outcomes that you want to achieve. So, um, so again, this is just one example. I love art, like I mentioned, art is, um, and especially with my organization, we use art as a way to um, make change and change our communities. So this is one way that you could. So, and you, can, and you can read a lot of these here, and I know that you know some of your own. These are some tactics I want you to think about. Um, and as you know, Karen and I were talking about this and brainstorming, the idea is that these tactics are universal, right? There's, um, your goals are localized. Like, again, you are the experts of your own community. You know um, what's best about what resources you have at your disposal, who the people that you know and can contact. Um, so that changes, and, and that, um, that goal you create with a, a part of organ your organizing people with you to achieve that goal. But these tactics are universal. They've been used forever. Um, and, you know, and they don't change. So, you know, we have campaign, oh, <laughs> oh <sorry. laughs> uh, so we have campaign organized. We have social media, which folks already uh, do, uh, attracting media attention. Um, again, using traditional arts, like you saw on the previous slide. Uh, and again, you, of course, you've seen demonstrations, rallies, and other forms of mass meetings. So on the next slide is like a small example of just a reminder that like, um, you know, again, that's a tactic. You're not just creating, you don't create like just a march for, that's not the goal, but it's like, what are you trying to achieve? Who are you targeting these, these um, you know, where, what location are you having these marches? What, and protests, like, you know, those are the things you want to think about. Mars, can I just jump in? So um, as you're seeing this, folks, like really think about your issue and how this all translates to what you're doing, right? And if you have any experience, throw up in the chat, like if you've organized a protest or if you've led a letter writing campaign, start putting in that chat so we can see some of the tactics that you've already, that you already have experience with. So, so if you would just like throw that in there so we can understand the breadth and scope of what you already have experienced would be great. Yeah, no, definitely. And also thinking about, um, you know, what are some, or what is an idea that you have that maybe you don't have all the resources um, but that's something that we could also maybe think about and support you with too. Like, you know, what if you were thinking about a digital campaign, um, you know, what are some websites? You can all, those are also questions to ask us as well. So uh, next slide. And again, these are just more examples of some universal tactics, lobbying, key decision makers. Again, I mentioned like electronic action alerts, um, right? You know, a lot of folks, you get emails, like petitions, campaigns, um, distribution of merchandise, caps, bags, you can be creative with that. Um, 
and also, um, yeah. And then mobilizing vol volunteer campaign activists. Um, and then also, yeah. So, and one thing you want, want oh, or, yeah, an organization or participation in specialized conferences and, and events and, you know, where, again, you know what's on, what's on the ground, where people go, what people are interested in, especially young people. So that's things that you can use to, to your advantage and use as a part of your planning. And also you may want to think about, I also recognize, I don't want to pretend that like um, different groups have different resources, right? So if you're a smaller group and you're just starting, you might want to think about who, who are you going to talk to that ha might have resources that you can use, right? Like who, are, like who are people in your community? You know, prior to COVID-19, you know, when I was working with a lot of schools and like looking at school organizing, you know, like um, if you're going to do a banner, if you're going to do like, you know, could you talk to the art teacher? Could you talk, do you, do you have a relationship with the principal? Um, that's kind of a smaller way of looking at campaigns, but those are, um, it is essential of like, you know, every community, even, even if it feels like folks don't have a lot of resources, you do have resources at your disposal, but it's about being really creative and thinking about who can support you. And chances are there are folks, um, especially folks who have power, who are, are sympathetic to your cause and want to support you, but it is about reaching out to them and building that relationship, building those relationships with them. And this is just another example of tactic, action alerts, internet phones, um, mobile, uh, so this was one on, um, uh, this is from Worth Rises, uh, uh, focus on uh, in, uh, decarceration, and the other one was again about funding and uh, de 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 cutting funding for ICE. So just examples of tactics that you um, that you often you've already seen. Can I just share one quick one? And I don't see anybody putting anything in the chat, and I know for sure some of you have done this, so I want to see some of what you've done. But I want to share my favorite. When I worked at Amnesty International, we were working on the case of a prisoner of conscience. And I can't remember the country. It was a smaller country. And we found out that the, um, the person who was our target loved American bas loved basketball, loved basketball. So we got some NBA players to write a note to him, like to write a petition, like sign a petition, write to him and say, we, this person needs to speak. And it worked. So you never know, you never know what is going to hit your target, right? To help move them to the place of, of what you want to achieve. Yeah, no, it's a great example. And I just mentioned like in the chat, like a, a lot of this is just research and researching like what connections and, and leveraging also social media connections too, to see like, um, you know, I remember that w when we were organizing on campus and some of the people that um, on, on college campus and when we wanted to do some work um, around School of the Americas and like, uh, you know, defunding um, like military kind of operations on campus, we looked at like, you know, did, did the person in charge at your college campus, did they have, a, did one of their, their um, children, like, did they go to campus? You know what I mean? Did, you know, did you, is it someone you actually might know and talking about them? And, and of course, thinking about what is appropriate and to you all, but also thinking about, um, you know, just being creative with who you reach out to. I love this. I love folks putting, the, you all have a wealth of knowledge. Oh, can I go back to the other one really quickly? Sure. Sorry. Um, but, yeah. So with tactics uh, and think, you know, Karen has reminded me of this, like, uh, you know, tactics, whatever you use should always be in context. You could have a super amazing, innovative tactic, but if it's not something that community um, wants or like, it's not something that resonates with the community, that's not as useful as something that is more um, thought out in terms of your audience, right? So, you know, we encourage you to be flexible, creative. We, of course, always direct at a target, make an event um, backed up by power, um, specific form of power, but again, always making sense um, to the membership and the people that you're trying to involve. And like I said, um, organization is always about relationship building. And I want us to reflect back on, the, on our meeting last week. And Christine was talking about the, the um, sessions they were holding in Florida. And remember, they were going to have a, a panel discussion or they were going to have something more engaging in the ACLU didn't want to quite do that. So on their feet, they had to change the presentation, right? So that idea of being flexible and reading the audience, reading the situation is really, really important. Thank you. So next, yeah, so we wanted to uh, create, again, create a little bit extra time for you to talk and discuss and kind of mull over these different um, information. Uh, so we're gonna break up into groups and each group will have its own scenario and it's very, um, it's like a skeleton, like it's not, there's not a lot of information that was intentional. And the idea, you are gonna read and discuss the scenario with your group. And as you're thinking as a group, you're gonna think about who's your tar target, who's your secondary target, 
what brainstorm together some tactics that you would use and also um you know what more information within me do you need but also i think that's okay with you karen like you can also be super you can use your imagination and also bring in um you can i think you can also make assumptions too in order to um help you brainstorm some of the tactics um so feel free yeah feel free to get creative with this and there's no right or wrong this is more that we can discuss and we're going to try i know that we don't it's hard sometimes to talk in larger groups but we're going to also try to um at least debrief one or two of them so maybe if someone wants to take notes or um that would be really great everybody ready all sorts of issues let's go thank you
Hello. Hello? Oh. Hi, sorry, I got kicked out um, of the breakout room. I think it was oh. number two. <laughs> oh, we're bringing everybody back, India, okay? Okay, no worries. Oh, so are you writing something for me? Writing I something? Say, yeah, aren't you one of um, Catherine's students? Yes, I am one of Catherine's, yes, yes. And did, I, did I send you the questions or did she send you questions? You, I'm just using the questions that you guys are using, um, especially that Mona used from the last session. Um, oh, I'm, in, I, India, I'm so mean. I'm completely changing this. Did Catherine say this is for our newsletter? Oh, really? Oh, oh my goodness. I didn't even know that. <laughs> okay, no, no. I'll follow up to you uh, after this call. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I jump from topic to topic, so sometimes. <laughs> hey, Jose, how are you? I'm doing good. Good, good. All right. Looks like everyone's back. Sorry if that was distracting me, jumping in and out of the calls, but it was so, it was interesting hearing kind of how you were all discussing and talking about the issues. Um, so oh, can we get a, a bit of a report out? Do, do, people, do people pick someone to give a, a little report out? We didn't, we didn't pick anyone, but I'm going to nominate Maisie to, uh, <laughs> to report out. Okay, so yeah, or, or I can start, or you wanna do whatever order. <laughs> um, so group three, I think we were, we discussed um, poverty and different ways to different tactics and different targets. So we came up with a couple of different organizations that were local to us. And then we also talked about using churches and homeless shelters um, and trying to use stories of homelessness and um, kind of just making sure people realize that it's like a real life situation that happens to real people, not not everyone who's homeless is a drug addict, drug addict, like all those stigmas and all those stereotypes that are really dangerous. Um, and then we discussed, so kind of breaking this down the stigma. And we also discussed leveraging off of like churches and other community, communities that might already have a larger outreach when you're starting a movement or starting an organization and how that can be really helpful to like give you a boost so that you can then have those connections. Great. Thank you, Mimi. No problem. You guys were group three? Yeah. How about group one, two, or four? I believe that my group was group four, and I had neglected to pick someone to share out either um but i'm hoping that one of my group members because all of them had such great ideas of richard or shiv or zoel or sarah or yanaris would feel comfortable sharing kind of what we talked about in terms of targets and tactics I can go, but maybe hopefully somebody can add on a little bit to what we were talking about. Um, basically, one of the main um, fundamental topics we were talking about, uh, well, I guess our main topic was women's violence, um, but the main strategy we were talking about was social media and how we can use that to outreach to people. You know, um, one of our group members said like a simple hashtag, you know, if you're sharing it, you know, all those stories you put on your story, they have all those posts. You know, you're really raising awareness, even in that small, minute way, um, and reaching out to people and DMing them and putting it on Twitter is um, a way to just get such a small group of people become such a big group, like the grassroots movement, and um, create major change. So yeah, that was what we basically talked about. If if I can jump onto that, I don't know if we can do you know two people, but uh, if I can jump onto that one. Um, with this, you know, power that we have with the media to get a message like that to a lot of people fairly quickly, that can, you know, lead to more than just social change. We talked about how that can be in and of itself a tactic to reach our targets because 
once you get that many people talking about an issue and that many people, you know, writing, writing petitions, writing letters, just generally, you know, showing interest in something in a, in a topic that can get your targets and the people who you want to reach interested and, you know, concerned about their constituents and concerned about, you know, this topic. And that way you have really, you've reached the people you want to reach without, you know, doing too much interaction with them yourselves when you've been mostly focused on, you know, educating and uh, interacting with the general public. How about group one? Oh, maybe what was the issue? Was group one farm worker? Yeah. Yeah, I think we were group one. Um, I can say something, but if anybody else wants to add. Um, so we were basically talking about how with farm workers' rights, um, most of the time the pressure is on like leadership within these different companies. Um, and that there's different ways about going about that. So either uh, starting like boycotts among uh, different unions or farm workers, um, but also considering the context of that and understanding that there could be adverse consequences um, in terms of um, income for those workers and looking at different tactics um, outside of that. So there's also just organizing within uh, different communities that maybe are not directly involved with the supply chain. Um, so just getting different activists to put pressure on companies like Wendy's or McDonald's or Chipotle that have direct relationships with some of these companies. Great. So Marissa, I think your group. Thank you, Garmin. I think, uh, yeah, I think Jose was gonna say thank you for. Uh, so our, uh, our topic was voting rights and we were talking about basically how to ensure fair elections. And we said that it would be very important for mail-in ballots to be um, nationwide in every state. I know for uh, there's some campaigns like uh, Joe Biden's political campaign, they've been talking about it. And I've, uh, there's petitions going on virtually through change.org and um, also move on. So we were saying that if, they could, uh, if we could do more petitions virtually and have political leaders like within the states, like governors, if we target governors or school presidents or and um, political um, leaders that can actually make the change for it to make, to make the policy actually in place that mail-in ballots have to be all right because during the pandemic, you know, um, uh, voting, voting suppression is going to be a, a bad issue because some people aren't going to be able to go or have the opportunity to be, have a safe place to go vote. So we targeted basically schools, universities, political leaders, and our tactics were going to be petitions. And we said social media was a big one because right now a lot of young people are using social media, um, like on Twitter or uh, even like TikTok. So we said if we could... Uh, basically fire up um, young people to have, have stuff trending or have stuff going around to spread like um, awareness of the reality that we need mail-in ballots during the pandemic. It would be very important to ensure that we do have fair and accessible elections for people. Great. So I just have a couple of thoughts and then I'm going to pass it off to Marissa to close us out. And just to remind folks that if you want to stay on to talk about your issue and do that more, just stay on and we're, we're here for that. Um, but kind of my thoughts are, you know, and I really appreciate that so many of you talked about this idea of building awareness, right? Because this is about power. Who has it? How can we take advantage and leverage the power that we have to create this change that we're talking about, that we're seeking, right? So building awareness is part of that, right? Building those alliances, those relationships that are so critical. And again, I'm thinking, you know, some of you mentioned it, Cesar Chavez and boycotts. I'm thinking so much about John Lewis and civil disobedience. When you're engaging in this work, I think it's so important to understand what your comfort level is. Like, what are you ready to do? What are you comfortable doing with your people, with people in community, kind of understanding that for yourself? I mean, the first time that I was arrested, I was in my, my 30s, because that was the first time I really felt like this was an issue and a cause, a place and a time that that was right for me to do, to do civil disobedience. But you've got to understand that for yourself and the people you're working with. That's why kind of awareness and relationship building will open doors, so many doors in this area when you're thinking of your target and how you're going to get to them. Um, and that's when this work is 
so crazy fun because you can you have so much in front of you to do this um understand bandwidth understand comfort understand that you're gonna that you you really want to hit them with with everything you have um so it's kind of my last thoughts marissa yeah no thanks again so much for being here um it's so awesome to hear as like the things you're working on and like just how how people think and like it's, it's super refreshing um, a few last things, and Karen hit on some of them too. Just, but one thing I noticed, like just being, and we'll talk about this next week. So, um, and so thinking about like clear goals. So clear goals will make it easier to create um, good tactics. So like just be mindful of that. Again, similar to building relationships, being understanding what resources you have at your disposal is super important, and that goes into research, research, research. Like um, that is really critical to any any organizing and what, what you have available. And I just want to, um, as the artist in me <laughs> wants to say to you all, just to, just to be creative. Like, um, as I mentioned before, the world, we're building the world as it could be, could be and it will be as opposed to what it is. So, um, like, create, the creative vision for the world requires creative tactics. So I just want to, like, uh, and we all have it within ourselves. So I want to encourage you all for that. Lastly, though, um, I want to, since we talked about farm workers very briefly, um, there was a quote that I wanted to share with you all, which is, from Dolores Huerta, so for folks might know, who worked alongside in building the UFW with Cesar Chavez, um, a powerful woman. Uh, I think about her, she's been organizing longer than double than I've been alive. Like, <laughs> it's so nuts to me. She's like giving, never giving up the fight and she's still active and doing work. So one quote that she, she has been known for saying is that every moment is an organizing opportunity, every person is a potential activist, and every minute is a chance to change the world. So um, thank you for being on your way to changing the world. So, thank you. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Good troublemakers. Good <laughs> troublemakers. Um, so, any, any, we're, we're at the, the three o'clock, and I know some people have to jump off now, but if you, if you want to stay on, if you have questions, if you, if you just want to engage, just to stay on, and that's fine. I want to give a huge shout out to the STV staff. Um, Laura, Jenny, and Adnan for helping out. Um, thank you guys. And so, um, and I know Laura and they have another session coming up for teachers soon. So if they need to jump, that's fine too. But yeah, any last thoughts from you all or, or things that are in your head right now? Here's Faith. Or you can also feel free to give a thought. We talked about this thorns and roses, something that you learned or liked or something that you felt challenged by. You can also add that in there. It's really an open space. So whatever comes to mind to ask, comment. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead organize like how would you like organize that Marissa, that was kind of scratchy can you do that again i think the connection is not if you're using the art to bring awareness how would you like organize all of that so you're asking um hopefully i heard that like if you for art use art to increase awareness and how would you do that yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, we have two artists on, definitely Marissa and and Jenny. So I'm gonna throw it to you guys. And if and if this is working for folks, can you just do a thumb up reaction? Because otherwise, we could go to smaller groups. Okay, this is okay. Okay. Jenny, Marissa, do you guys want to dive into that? Sure. So we so we also have a theater program. Um, we're working with amazing artists in DC to talk about how art can be used as a tool to create change and advocacy. So if you're interested in that, um, please reach out to us and, and we can send you information. But theater can be used to start hard conversations, to illuminate um, things going on in the community. It can have to do with race. Um, it, it's, it's meant to illuminate things happening through com um, com Forming compassion, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find my words, but that's the beauty of art. You see yourself in, or other people that you know on the stage or in 
pieces of art and then you have compassion for those issues and maybe approach them differently or feel inspired to ask questions or um, want to do something about it. And uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of how the, the theater perspective. Um, does that make sense, Marissa? Do you wanna to add to that? Yeah, and I'm glad I'm glad you uh, do the theater because uh, we do visual arts, <laughs> so I don't know too much about theater. <laughs> but I think with visual arts, um, we're seeing a lot of interesting things. One, I mean, so we do a lot of murals, like or I did a lot of murals. Um, so, uh, like, we're finding that like similar to that, like using uh, muralism to like um, based on an issue that communities feel excited about and felt they want to change. So, like, just having these big visuals that people can't help but see, you know, and they pass by and it kind of asking them to like question um, their, their thoughts on a particular issue. There's one artist also like a, a, a visual artist that um, uh, her name is Ana Teresa Fernandez and she actually went to the border of San Diego, like border of Mexico um, in the US and actually painted over a piece of the wall in a blue hue that, so you could, if you looked, it's like an optical illusion. So if you looked at it from far away, it almost looked like there was no border, which I think is really interesting. And I'm sharing this because um, obviously there's a border there, obviously like, you know, like, but the idea that like, by creating that illusion, it's one way of getting people to think of, like, it's a metaphor, right? And it's like getting people to think, you know, what does that mean to not have them? Or what does that mean? So I think that a lot of visual arts pushes people to think in these really unconventional ways. Um, and then you have the more practical, you know, you know, we work with people to design t-shirts with young people at Rikers. We've done like postcard campaigns where people have designed actual postcards. Those are also things that like, that can be used like as tangible tools also to push forward agendas or push forward. So you have, you know, so you have this way that allow people to process things and, and reconsider the way that the world is. And you have these things that can be used um, to again, as part of tools of legislation and things like that. I don't know if that was helpful and I'm happy to talk one-on-one -on -one about that. Yeah, and some movements are, are well known. I think the violence against women and domestic violence, the t-shirts, you know, I think there's some movements that, that I connect with art because they've used creative art, like visual art to build that awareness. And so particularly for some of you on campuses, that may be something that you want to explore, right? If, if part of your campaign strategy is building awareness, think of an, a, a creative artistic way to, to do that. It's really powerful, really powerful. There's another example, Karen, do you remember when we were in Oslo? I don't know if you sat in that session. There's this young uh, Pakistani woman who's, who's really talking about um, sort of the culture and toxic culture of patriarchy and, and violence against women and women's rights and their own freedom. And a lot of it is because it's just taboo subject to talk about in, in certain communities and cultures. And so she goes around and paints murals all over Pakistan of what are traditionally male jobs or roles or actions or behaviors, but puts it in to the context of putting a woman, a female in that role. And it's, it's controversial. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really aggressive for a, for, for a very conservative culture, but it's effective because it makes people comfortable it, make, it, it allows a space for people to just start talking about it. Even if it comes from talking from a, a point of contention, it's at least talking about it because it's visual and you can't escape it. And people have to talk about it in dialogue. And that's, it comes with that notion of awareness is that the change can only happen if you acknowledge it, if you are um, wanting to engage in difficult conversations. And I think that's what art does, not only in the visual form, but in film, in music, you name it, it's, it, it, it gets people to talk, start talking about something that people are much more comfortable sort of ignoring when it's not in your face or being heard through your ears or, or whatnot. So, um, you know, so that's how it's really effective. If I, just one more thing to that, like also, I, I love that you brought all that up because uh, also, you know, I'm seeing a lot, like there's folks I know and, and I have a friend in India who's doing like comic books with like women, um, like and talking about gender issues as well, and like doing graphic graphic novels and, um, or you know, one thing that art has been doing a lot of is like zines, you know, like so that's been coming like resurfacing um, for whatever reason. So I think those are ways that like you can, yeah, anyone can create it. Like even if right now we can't do a lot of murals or it's harder to do groups of people in murals, so like making individual zines and also using that part of social media, that's also art too. 
And with, with the tie with social media, a lot of artists I see, they'll put out really compelling images or short videos or things like that. Um, and, you know, because it, it tugs at the emotional side, the human side of, uh, of you. But then the immediate response is like, oh, man, I, I, I'm feeling helpless. I'm not doing anything about it. And making sure that you attach an avenue for action to the thing that 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 pulls you in. So I use that that uh, that individual as an example. When she puts up her images on social media and people see it, it's automatically also in the caption or in the link uh, an avenue to either donate or volunteer your time with local organizations that are combating violence against women or or combating against equal pay for women. Um, so you know, attaching those avenues of how to take action is, it's like, it's immediate. You see what the issue is and you immediately are directed to an avenue that can actually take action against that issue. So other, other thoughts, what else are, is roaming through your heads right now? Thinking about your campaign strategy, thinking about your goals, thinking about how you're communicating those. I have a question about um, like, the targets. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll mention like particularly like uh, like targets must be people. Um, so is it like okay to have a bunch of targets? So I guess like my first question is like say if the target is like Congress for example like that's very much an institution and not people so I guess you make your targets just like the different members that you want to maybe target for that. Sure. So, so let's say, for instance, we go with the violence against women, right? You, you would, so Congress is an entity, but you would go after the members of a committee that has the power to advance the legislation or budget that you're asking for, right? So you can fine tune any issue you can fine tune to, to a handful of folks who actually are making those decisions, right? And so, yes, Congress is one big thing, but there's bound to be um, there's your representative, right? So you have a very direct link to that person. So if this is, if you're working on an issue that is legislative, absolutely think about your senators and your congressperson, right? They, they could be targets. If you're thinking about something that's more a national agenda, go to the committee that has the power to, to make those decisions. Um, so you can, you can do that at the city council level as well. Every city council has committees. Ed, any, my little town here, we have you know, the town council has committees. So, so try to, when you find in your goal, as Marissa said, is that becomes tighter, you really understand your long-term and those shorter steps, you're gonna be able to really pinpoint those targets to get you there. And the other piece, I forgot to mention this when everyone was on, the other most really important thing with this is when your target does what you ask them to do, thank them right? That is part of building those relationships. So even if it's someone that you're just like, I really don't like this person, but they just did what I, they passed that legislation, they funded this policy, they funded this initiative at school, thank them, because that's part of this process. That's part of building relationships and organizing. But you can always, and if you want to, when you find Tindering your, your goal, we can talk, we can talk with you about kind of really understanding who that target is for you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Other questions or thoughts? Is it coming together? Is it exciting? Are you finding like a way forward with some of this? I'm gonna have to inject you all with like, <laughs> So here's another thing that I wanna suggest to you. Um, public speaking and, and being able to speak, and it kind of touches on the theater stuff, I would say. I, I would suggest, because a couple of you have talked about communicating what you're working on, I would really suggest write up a few speeches or grab some speeches that other people stand in front of a mirror and practice, because that's another really important piece of this. And whether you're communicating on Zoom, which may be the reality for a while, or whether it's you speaking one-on-one -on -one with your representative, because that's your target, the, the easier it is for you to articulate your message and the more comfort you have getting up in front of 500 or five or one, 
it's it's better for you you're i mean that will serve you well in anything in life but particularly for campaign organizing huge get in front of a mirror film yourself have a friend film you I saw in the chat, Graham, you wrote how much research. Yes, absolutely. A bulk of it is research. If we use that example that we were just talking about of members of Congress and we're using women's rights, let's use that as an example. These, they're public records of voting behaviors of individuals of Congress. And instead of feeling overwhelmed, who do I tackle? You can look at voting records and look at, you can fine tune that and distill it onto who are like the 10 Congress members who are sort of in the center, who are much more likely to lean your way if you put enough pressure on them versus thinking, I'm going to go out to the most far right winged Congress person to change their mind, which is probably going to be a lot more difficult than someone who's sort of in the center and sometimes leans against your way, but with enough pressure will lean this way and it's enough of a swing vote to, to make it go your way, maybe on, on women's rights to abortion, for example, right? And like, how do you affect those Congress members or those representatives? But it's the research part of looking at voting history and voting behaviors. And, and it helps you to understand who those targets could be based on that versus feeling like, I don't even know where to start of who the target should be on a specific issue. So that research point, um, absolutely. But hopefully if you care about this issue, the research is really fun, right? Because it's kind of like you're understanding the layers of all of this, um, which when the change happens, then it's, it's, it's going to be, it's cool. So I hope you're enjoying the research. <laughs> Karen or Marissa, did you want to add anything to something that you said about like when, 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 it, when a target actually does something in your favor. I mean, it's a win. It might not be the big win, but the importance of claiming victory and what happens when you don't claim victory in a timely manner. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. I mean, for me, I think that's all really tactical, right? Like you need to understand the water you're swimming in. So I think that there are times when like a win, so I'm thinking of Christine's stories from about the, her death penalty case, right? So when they had, or even Mona's work on the death, like that success was to be celebrated because that then send out these ripples, right? And I think that's typically the way it is, like to claim it, to recognize it, to put it out there through your social media, through whatever the communications channels, but, but also um, be aware based on your research, like will that ripple to bring more change your way or could it potentially backfire? So always be, I think, again, to your point, your research, you'll know whether like a big, huge celebration is going to like push the wall down or is it gonna make somebody else put more walls up? But I think always thank the people. Yeah. Yeah, Most yeah, I would just add um, with like, for example, the Urban Shields example I brought up with, um, uh, in well, the, in Oakland, like I think I mean that was one thing when I was doing my research. Was like I came up, like you know, they were very very clear about this. We won this, you know, so we knew how like like you knew that the campaign was successful. Um, but I think it I think it's important also just because it allows you to have control over your own narrative, right? So like you're telling as you're telling the story of your organization or your, your campaign, like we won this, and like and when you control your own narrative, other people can't. So I think that's really important. Um, and then also, um, there's one other thing I wanted to bring up about that. Um, yeah, I think that was my main point. There was something else, but I forgot. But, <laughs> but yeah, essentially, yeah, you're in control of that. And also, um, oh, and also, like, I think also, Karen, you're right. You have, you have to know when to be grateful, but it's also, you can use that as a tool. It's like, people want to support winning things already, like winning campaigns and things like that. So that, that is also a way to bring in more people if you're trying to build more support for an, another particular thing. Or, Any other thoughts, questions, reflections? So next week we're gonna dive into goals. We're gonna really spend some time thinking about and helping flesh out goals and objectives. Um, we'll send a little pre-work for you to focus on 
It seems, how many people are good with their issue? If people have issues they really want to tackle, yeah? Anybody still struggling with that? Maybe a little? No, yes, we're good. I think the biggest thing with the issue is just that it's almost frustrating to put yourself into one issue. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, but I think it, in order to have effective change, you do need to like choose one issue. But that's like my, like I, I feel like I have an issue, but I also know that, that if I think about it, there's 50 other things that I don't want to ignore. But remember, you need to be good to yourself too, right? And we <laughs> all have so much bandwidth. There's that, right? All of us have bandwidth. And so just because you're, it's not your priority issue doesn't mean that you don't care about it, you're not working on it, right? Like you can still participate on a campaign and not lead it. Like this is something you're gonna lead. You're gonna be like a player for this issue, right? Um, so own that, own it and, and celebrate and be happy about that and, and know that you still care about other things. That's fine and it's great, it's brilliant of you. The world needs us all to be compassionate and caring about so many things. Totally, totally, and I think, yeah, and I, that this shows how compassionate you are, and I love that, and yeah, I think, but I do think that there, um, whether, it, I mean, again, as a, like, whether it is organizing something, or like starting something, because, and Karen knows, like, I started this organization, and for me, it was really hard, I was like, I want to do all the things, I was like, I want to do theater and visual arts, and I was like, that's too much, you know what I mean, so for me, it made sense to focus on one thing, but like, um, especially as you're building out your tactics, there, I think there are ways to incorporate some of these other things, and, and you're building relationships with other people, so it's not, you don't have to necessarily let go of that, but just, but for your own sake and your own goal and your own health, just being really clear is super important. All right, everybody. So we're all good. So just know, like you know how to reach, you know how to reach me. And if I can't help you or answer any questions, I will make sure to bring in a, one of my teammates, facilitator, someone, but please, we're, we're here to really help work with you, to be with you in this process. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out or ask, okay? Good. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.